All right, so today we're going to learn about the point slope form of a line. So first of all, um, there really are three main forms that we use uh, for looking at uh, linear equations. Uh, and um, one of them that you have already learned is the slope intercept form. And in this case here, we're able to look at an equation and it's really easy to find the slope and the y-intercept. The slope is the coefficient of the x term. So in this case here, the slope is equal to two. Uh, and the y-intercept is the constant term here of minus four. And we have that. So very easy to find the slope and y-intercept. All right, but sometimes uh, that's a pretty specific point, that y-intercept. Sometimes we don't know what the y-intercept is. Sometimes we know just one other point and we don't know it's not specifically the y-intercept. Well, if that's the case, then we really want to be using the point slope form. We can use the slope intercept form for that as well, um, but we're gonna, today we're going to learn a very easy way of using uh, the point slope form to be able to do that. So we're going to be able to look at an equation that looks like this in point slope form and be able to, from that, we're going to be able to find the slope and one other point uh, in that line where that'll help us be able to graph it. And then later on, we'll look at standard form. And standard form is really good if not only, if we might not know the slope, but we might know the y-intercept uh, and in this case, the x-intercept. If we know the two intercepts, uh, standard form is really good for finding that or vice versa. Um, if we have the equation, uh, it's very easy to find the x and y intercept. Okay, all right, so let's take a look at uh, a very simple graph. This is the simplest linear equation here, y equals to x. We know that when x is one, y is also one. When x is zero, y is also zero. We have a very simple uh, set of points here um, for this graph. Um, we, is it, what form is it in? Um, well, hopefully you recognize that it is in point slope form. We can actually, we can uh, look at the slope. And if I, I'm going to take a look at here, what is the slope of the line y equals x? Well, remember what slope means. Slope means that as I move one value to the right on x, uh, how much does it go up? It goes up one value on the y. So the slope is one. Uh, another way of thinking about that uh, to find the slope, remember that from any point here, uh, finding the slope, we can simply use the fraction rise over run to find it. And we're going to rise one and run one. One over one gives us a slope of one. Okay, so what happens uh, if we change the equation to y equals to 2x? All right, let's take a look at that. Oops. Let's take a look at that here. We have the equation here of y equals to 2x. All right, so, so what happened here? We have for every x value we move uh, to the 1, it's a rise of 2 units here. Okay, so that is a slope of 2. And sure enough, we would expect that a slope of 2, the coefficient of the x term is 2. We have a slope of 2 there. Uh, we are going to rise 2 over 1, uh, run of 1. So rise over run is 2 over 1, which is 2. Okay, so uh, let's say that we wanted to now take this equation and be able to, um, I'm going to take this line and say, all right, I wanna find the graph of a line that has the slope of two, but uh, I am, I'm going to change it. So I would like uh, this line to go through a specific point. And I'm gonna choose this point right over here. Uh, it's negative two, negative eight. I want to take this line and be able to move it right over here. All right. So I'm going to start off with something that we already know. Let's say I wanted to move it just to here. I've got, uh, I know that this goes through uh, the y-intercept here is zero. This is y equals two x plus zero. I know that I can move this equation down eight uh, to negative eight by making my y-intercept negative eight. Uh, I could type in here, y is equal to 2x minus 8. And sure enough, uh, I have a y-intercept of negative 8. Um, but another way of doing that is really interesting. What if I wanted to take that negative 8 and add 8 to both sides? I should, When I add something, the property of equality to both sides, I should get the same equation. It should look exactly the same here if I add 8 to both sides. Well, if I add 8 to this side, uh, this part uh, is going to disappear. Uh, and I add 8 to this side, I'm going to have a plus 8 over here. Very interesting, just like we'd expect. 
we still have that same, uh, remember we use the property of equality, we still have the same exact equation in there. But what's interesting when I look at this, when the, when the eight is on this side, when it's on the same side as the Y, um, we have to remember that that sign positive eight is really people get confused by that. Wait, positive eight means eight up, but not when it's on the same side as the Y, it means just the opposite. So in fact, when you put a plus eight on the side of the Y, it actually moves the equation down eight, just like we expected it when it was on the other side to have a minus eight. So that's really important to realize when you are writing, when you're changing something on the same side as the variable, um, the sign of what you're doing actually kind of happens opposite of what you might intuitively think it's going to do. Okay, so now let's use that principle I want to take it from, I have this minus 8 over here, 0 comma minus 8 is a point that it goes through, but I want it to go through minus 2 minus 8. So what do I do to move it over here? Well, let's see. I want to move my x value 2 to the left. And so I'm going to, I could just like I changed my y value by adding a plus 8 to it over here, and that moved it down 8, if I want to go 2 to the left, then I'm gonna to wanna to do a plus two to the x, okay? But I'm gonna put in some parentheses here because I don't, I don't wanna lose my slope of two in here, uh, in here, my coefficient of that x term here. So I'm gonna do x and I'm gonna see what happens if I do a plus two in there. Does that move my graph for, uh, over two to the left? Sure it did, all right, and again, um, the plus two, again, we, it's kind of counterintuitive. We might think a plus two to the X would move it to the right two, but remember because it's on the same side of the X, it's actually moving it left two. Okay. So let's go back to this presentation here and let's take a look and let's see if we can, what we can learn from this equation here. All right, so this is in point slope form here. And this actually tells us, first of all, what is the slope? Where is that coefficient of the x term? Well, sure enough, there it is right there. There's the three. A very easy, one of the things about uh, point slope form is it tells you a point and the slope. Well, there's the slope right there, the part that's outside the parentheses like it's the coefficient of the x term, same thing as it was with when we were doing slope intercept form. So there's the slope of three. Okay, what's one point that it goes through? Well, remember that um, we, are, we have this plus five and we have this minus two. So uh, the x coordinate, remember it's the opposite of the sign that's right next to the x. So if this is a plus five, the x coordinate is going to be minus five. And the y coordinate, the opposite of the sign is going to be positive two. So it should be negative five, positive two. So that's a point that it goes through. So now when I go to graph this, I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna start off with a point. I have a point of negative five and positive two right here. I'm gonna put a, a point right here. And then my slope is three, which means uh, I can, or which means for every one X value, I'm going to rise three or think of it as the slope is the rise over the run, a rise of three, a run of one. Here's going to be my next point and another rise of three and a run of one. There's going to be my next point. So again, I had negative five comma two right here, this point here. And then I use my slope to find any other points, rise three, run one, rise three, run, run one. I have, all I need is two points, but I always get a few extra ones to graph there, draw my line through it, and I have now graphed this equation here that is in point slope form. All I, all I needed was uh, one point, which I got here from the equation, and the slope, which I also got here from the equation. So now all you need to do is get a little bit of practice with this uh, and you should get pretty good at this one here.